Hey, this is Pastor Preston from Asheville First United Methodist Church, and I want to welcome you to our online worship experience from wherever you are tuning in. Before we get started, I just wanted to make a couple brief announcements. The first is if you want to keep up with what we're doing here, uh, one of the easier ways to do that is to hit uh, the subscribe button underneath the video or give a thumbs up. It'll allow these videos to keep popping up on your feed online, um, but it'll also give you a notification whenever we post something, uh, a new worship video or, or something new that we're working on. Uh, one, another thing you can find in the links below are our um, social media links, uh, phone number, email, uh, way to get in touch with us on Facebook, and we'd encourage you to do so. Reach out uh, in this time if you need somebody to talk to, you just want to have a conversation, or if there's a way we can help you as the church here in Ashtabula, please don't hesitate to reach out. Lastly, what you will find is a link to our Tithely page. Uh, this is an online giving platform that would allow you to contribute to the mission of the church here in Ashtabula, uh, even though you're not physically with us right now, but just virtually. And I would just encourage you that if this service impacted you at all, uh, if you found it meaningful, um, and you have the capacity to give, uh, I'd, I'd ask that you uh, please consider doing so. We know that times are tough right now for everyone. And if you can spare something and you f are feeling led to, we would be uh, humbly appreciative of anything you could think to give. Uh, your donations go to continue um, these videos, uh, the upkeep of our building, um, but also uh, they allow us to keep doing our, our missional activities, uh, reaching out uh, to people who don't necessarily have internet access, uh, but also uh, providing uh, necessary aid to people who come in and ask for it. Uh, in Matthew, uh, Jesus is confronted with uh, sheep and goats, right? That there's two groups of people that are going to exist uh, during like the judgment times, right? And uh, the sheep are people who saw and fed uh, Jesus when they saw him, they gave him clothes, they uh, provided him with a roof over his head, they visited him in jail. And uh, the sheep did this, but the goats didn't, right? And the goats, uh, they asked, well, we never saw you, Jesus, uh, in jail or hungry or you need something to drink or you were naked. And, and Jesus replies, well, anything you do for uh, any of your siblings, you know, the least of these, your brothers and your sisters, you've done for me. So the mission of, of the church here in Ashtabula, it's not just to make disciples of Jesus Christ, but rather it's to provide and care for our entire community as though we are providing love and care for Jesus Christ. And everything you give goes closer to us uh, fulfilling and maintaining to fulfill that goal. So without any further ado or announcements, let us prepare to give the entirety of our hearts, minds, bodies, and our souls to the worship of the living God.
from Psalm 145, verses 8 through 14. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All you have made will praise you, O Lord. Your saints will extol you. They will tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might, so that all men may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is faithful to all his promises and loving toward all he has made. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. Amen. together as a community to pray. Um, it's not lost on me uh, that we are coming up on the 4th of July, uh, Independence Day, uh, <clears throat> uh, for our country. And there are certain things to be thankful for, you know, that we, um, that we're allowed to, uh, that we have certain rights that are permitted to us, that we are free to express ourselves uh, spiritually, religiously. Um, without any sort of uh, law that hampers us or uh, harasses us, um, could should be thankful for that. But we should also be mindful of those communities in our society who um, have not necessarily been guaranteed the freedoms that are entitled to them uh, by our, you know, by our claiming of independence, by, our, by staking our claim. Uh, you know, 4th of July is, is a day where we celebrate how great our country is, and in many respects we are very lucky and very blessed to be here. But that narrative is not the same for some of our brothers and sisters. Um, there are some of our siblings um, whose life is made harder in this country uh, solely because of the color of their skin, um, some solely because of their gender, some solely because of the people they choose to love um, or the people that God has put love in their hearts for. It's probably a better way to say that. Um, so as we come together, it is, it's okay to be thankful for, for our rights. It's okay to, be, to feel blessed um, that, we, um, that we enjoy a very privileged life in America. Um, but one thing that I don't think is okay is to go past this day and um, especially with everything that's going on, um, assume that our experience is the experience of everyone that we interact with. Uh, in declaring independence from, uh, 
from Great Britain, um, uh, the people of, of America had something better in mind, um, trying to make something new, um, something that would work. Um, not for everyone, that's pretty evident, but something that would work better for the people that were living there. And as we come to yet another 4th of July, as the church, as a community of people who are striving to make the world like God has intended it, who are struggling to create something new and something better. Let us plead to God for ways to commit ourselves for causes of justice, um, equality uh, for our oppressed brothers and sisters, um, so that everyone may truly be blessed to live in this country, that all people may be treated equal regardless of their sexuality, gender identity, or the color of their skin, their ethnicity, what, um, what religion they choose to practice. That we can actually create um, a better country and in doing so, in creating a more equitable and just society for all people, we will be making uh, it here on earth, for us here in Ashtabula, Ohio, or for you, wherever you are tuning in from, we will be making that little slice of pie that we have on earth just a little bit more like it is in heaven. We pray it every time in the Lord's Prayer. And we have an opportunity every day to partner with God to make it so. So as we come together in prayer on this 4th of July, um, this holiday independence weekend, let us seek for opportunities that we can work to create the kingdom of God in this country so that all people, regardless of their skin color, regardless of their gender identity, regardless of their sexuality, may truly live in freedom here. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we come before you in a very troubling time. We see families, neighbors, communities rocked to the very core, for the veneer has fallen off. For we now see ourselves, we now see our communities, for what they've been all along. And maybe they haven't been that way to us. Maybe life for us has been great, a blessing. Not necessarily easy, but comfortable. Maybe we have never been judged for the color of our skin. Maybe we have not been discriminated against because of our gender. Maybe we personally have not been denied rights because of the people we love. But our brothers and sisters, our siblings, they have. We share our life with people who have been discriminated against because of the color of their skin. We share our life with those who have been discriminated against because of their gender. We walk together with those who are denied rights because of the people they love. They exist in our neighborhoods. They live in our communities. And we ignore their calls. Their cries for justice go unheard to our ears, but you hear them, O oh God. Give us ears to hear the call of the oppressed within our community. Give us eyes to see the injustice that happens around us in our world, in our city, in our own backyard. And allow us, give us the freedom and ability, give us the power to live lives that seek to include and share your love 
and life with all of those people. Let us break bread with those who have been discriminated against because of their race, their gender, their sexual identity. God, we ask you to give us a life that is in the midst of this human struggle. That in the messiness of it all, we may see and interact with Jesus Christ as he lives and breathes in the world today. And then may we be empowered to further partner with you and make it on earth as it is in heaven on this day, on every day going forward. Let us be beacons of your light and love, O God. To those who are hurting within our communities. To those who struggle with loss. Grant them peace and comfort, knowing that their loved one, the one that they have lost, is with you. That their beloved dwells in the light and love everlasting of our God. And that they rest peacefully in your arms until we are all reunited in that blissful reunion. For those of us who are undergoing procedures, who find ourselves in care facilities, for those of us who find ourselves in hospitals at this time, grant them peace, grant them health, and grant them courage and strength to face the days ahead and take whatever steps in their journey they need to take. And may you bless those who seek to care for them, O oh God, May you give them steady hands and calm minds. May you give them compassionate hearts and listening ears. That they may be the best caregivers that you have called them to be. And as we come to you as a community, O oh God, we also come to you as individuals. Not that we seek to put ourselves before another, but we come to you knowing that you are our refuge our rock in the storms where we can live, our burdens go. That you will take that which weighs us down so that we may live in true freedom in this world. You, only you and you alone are the, are the one who gives us life, gives us true freedom. As we prepare our hearts to come to you in silence, take these burdens, lighten our load, and gird us with strength for the battles we will face ahead as we strive to create a more equitable and just society for all of your children, all of whom are fearfully and wonderfully made. Let us come to you in silence, for you alone have the power to hear the prayers trapped within the depths of our hearts. And you alone have the power to respond. Gracious and loving God, grant us the strength and courage to follow in your example, proclaiming the nearness of your kingdom and speaking out against the injustices as our, of our world. Grant us the courage to follow as disciples in the example you've given us in your life as Jesus the Christ, 
your word made flesh to dwell among us. You taught us how to love ourselves, our neighbors, our enemies more fully. And what exactly a kingdom of all creation, a kingdom of God, can look like if it exists in our world today. And you gave us the power through your death and resurrection to make it so that we all can transcend the powers of sin, evil, and death, and that we can instead live lives that are full of grace, love, mercy, compassion, and justice. That we may transcend the world and live in a life in full relationship and communion with you. And so in recognition of your mighty acts of grace and salvation, all that you have given us and continue to give us, we now join together in the prayer that you have taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs>
Today we're reading from the Old Testament book, Song of Songs, the second chapter, verses 8 through 13. The Song of Songs is correspondence between a man and his beloved. Listen to these words as she speaks. Listen, my lover, look, here he comes, leaping across the mountains, bounding over the hills. My lover is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing through the windows, peering through the lattice. My lover spoke and said to me, Arise, my darling, my beautiful one, and come with me. See, the winter is past, the rains are over and gone. Flowers appear on the earth, the season of singing has come. The cooing of doves is heard in our land. The fig tree forms its early fruit. The blossoming vines spread their fragrance. Arise, come, my darling, my beautiful one. Come with me. Amen. So Will's text this morning comes from the Song of Songs, or the Psalm of Songs, or the Psalm of Solomon. Um, it goes by a lot of different titles. But the, but the book's still the same. There's not a lot. There's not any changes in what we read. And what's so interesting about this book is um, I can't really remember the last time I cracked the Bible open and uh, wanted to read me some Psalm of Psalms. Um, and I'm curious uh, for those of you. Maybe you had a devotional that has walked you through it, or maybe you were just curious at some point and uh, turned the pages to that. But when was the last time you cracked open? The Song of Songs. What was um, going on at that point? Um, why did you do it? Was it for a devotional? Was it for a study? Or were you just kind of curious? Because if we kind of look at it on a surface view of what the Song of Songs is in, one of, one of the early questions that we get is, why is it in here? <laughs> you know? Um, and that's because, well, let's, I guess let's talk about it. The Song of Songs is written from two perspectives, or you could argue one overarching perspective. Um, but it's, if you go by two perspectives, it's two lovers. It's, there's a man and a woman, and they are uh, madly in love with each other. And, uh, or, and the, per, the predominant um, voice here in perspective is, is from the woman. And if you have kind of, if you've delved into kind of the authorship of the books of the Bible, uh, the society that the Bible is kind of being written in, that's, that's different. You don't have a lot being written from the perspective um, and the voice, really, of, of a woman. You, you don't have that. We have stories of great female protagonists. You, you have Ruth and, and, and Hannah and Deborah, but they're not really written from their perspective. Right? Between Ruth and Naomi, we, we have a lot of dialogue, and we know what happens to Ruth and like what Ruth says, but the story isn't told from Ruth's perspective the way the Song of Songs is told from the woman's perspective. And if we just kind of look at it on the surface there, it is a, a, a love letter, or love letters. It's a correspondence between... Uh, a man and a woman who are deeply in love. And when we look at that, just on the surface, the, the first question that always comes to me, and I'm, I'm curious if, if it comes to you too, is, well, that's nice, but why is it in here? <laughs> you know, we have epic histories of God saving acts throughout the world. We have the story of Jesus Christ, um, you know, his ministry, his life, death, resurrection, um, all the miracles associated with that, but like just you know, chalked in the middle is just a, it's just like a, a a correspondence of like some like ancient risque letters. <laughs> where does this where does this fit? I mean, we have kind of we have more humanish human esque dialogue in in the Psalms. I, I really believe that um, a character we can all relate with the deepest in Scripture is actually the, the psalmist. Um, you know, and these are authentic conversations with God, but those conversations are with, with God. Right? Song of Songs, if you just kind of read it 
from the top down, it's not a whole lot of like, I don't want to say God involved, but it doesn't seem right on the outset to be kind of related to anything else that's going on in either the Hebrew Bible or the New Testament. So, like, why is it in there? You know, uh, we read a little bit uh, with Will earlier this morning, but there's like other really fun references in the Song of Songs. Um, one of my favorites is, uh, I can't quite point it out to you, but they're, they're talking about, um, you know, how basically the guy is very happy that uh, the woman he's, uh, he's talking to has like all of her teeth. <laughs> like, it's just funny, like what you used to hit on other people with in the ancient Near East. Oh, hello. I, I don't, what was that for? <laughs> Do we keep that in? Like, <laughs> I'm like halfway in. <laughs> Maybe we keep it in. Maybe we keep it in um, because there's a deeply human moment in what has happened here. You know, we, we've set up the sanctuary and all the lights are on so they come down and you know, even though I'm a little sunburnt, I look a little red, um, but like I, I'm, they're trying to put me in the best light possible. Um, and then in the middle of it all, like the car um, horn just kind of screeches and takes us all back to the reality out of the, the little pretend world we've created. And I wonder if having a profoundly human moment, observing a profoundly human moment is almost why the Song of Songs is in the Bible. Um, what easy way, what better way to talk about a personal relationship with God than actually talk about a personal relationship with other people? And you can, I, I, the rebuttal would be, well, well, this is kind of like a romantic letter. There's some, uh, uh, let's be honest, there's some sexual innuendos, <laughs> you know. Uh, we actually cut out a little bit before, but there's a, uh, this is pretty questionable stuff if you uh, take into account what certain things kind of meant, you know, with, on the other side of a wink in the ancient Near East. But I have a hard time thinking that people were reading the Song of Songs or the Psalm of Solomon or the Psalm of Psalms, whatever you want to call it. I have a really hard time thinking that people in the ancient Near East were reading this letter and kind of giggling about it. I also have a hard time thinking that they were kind of grossed out by it. I wonder, rather, if people read the Song of Songs thinking about this is what it could be like if our community actually had a deep relationship with God. In what way does God actually desire to know and be in relationship with us. Not in a weird kind of sexual way, but in a deep, profound, yearning sort of way. Kind of the major uh, um, kind of crux, kind of the, the big point of tension in the Song of Songs is that the man and the woman, they're, they're talking to each other, but they, they're not together. And as they correspond back and forth, they, they're talking about how good it would be to be with one another, but there's also these, like, save yourself for me kind of, uh, kind of motifs in it. Like, don't share your love to anyone else but rather uh, wait until I can finally be with you. And I wonder if that's not the kind of relationship God desires, that with each and every one of us, God is secretly, well, not secretly, but rather patiently yearning for a time in which we can actually walk closely with him. I wonder if the Song of Songs isn't just some sort of raunchy ancient Near Eastern love letter, but actually 
a subversive text that uses human relationships and emotions to describe how God desires to be in relationship with us. It's hard to think about what it would, like, what it would be like to be in a relationship with God, right? A being that, you know, if we want to use a philosophical definition, is greater than which we could ever conceive. What, what does it even look like? What, how could you, I can't even process that. I don't even know how I begin to process that. But I think within the Song of Songs, we almost get a sort of blueprint that God longs after us the way our two lovers long after each other, finding no imperfections with one another, but rather appreciative of each single detail of the person they are longing for. When we join a relationship with God, there is inner transformation. We, we don't stay the way we are. Uh, God's love and God's grace impact us too greatly, and it compels us to act in a more loving way towards all people, but God's love is not dependent on a nice smile or a good selfie angle or even non-sunburnt skin <laughs> for that matter but rather God appreciates and loves every single bit of us just as we are this is the God who made us that way and so for this week, as we continue to walk with God, as we continue to try and understand what a relationship with Jesus Christ looks like, as we really try to get a grasp and a hold on how we are supposed to act as Christians within our community, our neighborhoods. I wonder if it can be helped. I wonder if our, our walk can be a little closer with God. I wonder if our steps can be a little lighter. I wonder if the burden becomes a little easier if we know that the God that yearns after us yearns after us wholly, completely, and sees us as we were meant to be. Calls us good, beautiful, worthy, acceptable, and pursues us, actually, wants that relationship with us. God is not just distant in the clouds, apathetic to whether we want a relationship or not. No, God actively pursues us like the lovers in the Song of Songs. God calls out to us constantly, giving us opportunities to be closer in relationship, giving us opportunities to tap into love and grace compassion and justice in everything we see in this world. Each moment we are given the choice to walk in deeper relationship with the God that has made us, the God that calls us love, the God that is in its fullest essence love. And just like the two lovers in the Song of Songs, just like the woman in the Song of Songs, I should say. That's definitely something worth writing about and sharing with others, even if it is in a weird, unique, subversive way. Song of Songs is in our Bible because it shows us exactly how God yearns after us, exactly what it is like to be in a relationship with a God who sometimes feels distant but strives to ever be present in our lives. Song of Songs is in there because it is a human experience with the divine, teaching us as humans what it can be like to have an experience with the divine.
my brothers, my sisters, siblings, my beloved friends. As we go forth this week, let us strive to have human experiences with the divine. Let us seek to understand that God yearns after us every moment of every day. That even as we feel that we are unworthy, even though as we feel that we are not good enough, if we are not perfect enough, if we don't necessarily have uh, the, the flat, most flattering angles, that God, the God who has made us, deems us worthy of being loved and yearns after us every waking moment of every day. And so you, may you go out and share that good news, but also look for opportunities to be closer in that relationship so that you may walk closer with the living God. May you go now in the name of that God who has made you in love. May you go now in the name of Jesus Christ who saves you through grace. And may you go now in the power of God's Holy Spirit that will strengthen and sustain us until we meet again. May God grant you courage and strength to live your life in faith in this time until we meet again. Amen.